Good evening, and welcome to Todd Clint's Share Pound. Stop. Starting over. Ready? In three, two, one. Good evening, and welcome to Todd Clint's SharePoint Podcast number 244, recorded live on April 20th, 2015. Live, live from Cincinnati, Ohio, I am your host, Shane Young. And I'd like to tell you where Todd is, but you know, when I asked him where he's going to be tonight, why he couldn't do the show, first he said something about being in London, and I don't know, a little gibberish, a little kind of just slurred off speech. And, and then he kept just telling me that it was 4.20, and that was a big deal. But it, it was 11.30 on my watch. I didn't understand what the 4.20 thing was, so I don't know. Either way, we're in good hands tonight with me, and the world is really a better place when it's you and I connecting. No Todd, no special guest host, just you and me having a good time. So I look forward to it, and I hope you do as well. All right. Um, first off, we'll start with a shameless plug. As always, Todd is good about thanking our friends at Rackspace, right? His employer, my employer, maybe one day your employer. How is that, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Um, so I've mentioned it before, but I thought it was worth throwing out here again tonight. I am um, hiring for a few different positions on my team. So while Todd is um, taking over the SharePoint world and is kind of filling the void, uh, the apps you know, for me not doing too much SharePoint stuff, right? Todd's really uh, knocking that out. But um, I'm running a, the Microsoft Private Cloud team, and we're also doing some, um, we're, we're poking the Azure bear a little bit as well. So I'm looking for two different positions tonight. This is my shameless plug. The first one is I'm looking for admins, Windows and Linux admins who want to come and join our team. You've got a strong Hyper-V, System Center, PowerShell, orchestration, you know, all of that fun uh, skill set, love to have you come join our team. Um, and if not, I'm also looking, maybe Azure's a little more your cup of tea? Mm, I'd like to talk to you. I'm looking for a hardcore Azure engineer. And I don't, it don't have to be the whole Azure stack at this point. I'm looking for somebody who's really good in Azure Virtual Machines, Azure um, Networking, Azure Storage, Azure AD. All right, if you can do those really well, the other pieces of Azure, they're nice to have, but not requirements. So, hey, this is a pretty big world. If you guys can help me find somebody that fill these spots, that would be fabulous. Um, you can hit me up. I can send you the links to the job offers or the, the job uh, recs. You can fill out things. Heck, if you can help me recruit somebody, I owe you a round of golf or a beer or all of the above. really need some help hiring, so help me out. Apparently, the chat room does not appreciate me talking about poking the Azure bear, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So anyway, there's my shameless plugs tonight. Jumping down here to production notes. Um, you know, once again, I asked Todd for an update. Hey, man, you got any production notes for last night? Right, the people care, right? You guys want to hear why was the audio bad or why it Todd, why was Todd so ugly? Right, the, the production notes for next week are gonna be like, man, I wish Shane had got a haircut. Bad news, my haircut got pushed until tomorrow morning. So while well, I've had a haircut, when you see the show, I don't actually have a haircut while I'm recording the show. Kind of full Back to the Future, Matrixy kind of thing there. Very confusing. But anyway, so I tried to get the production notes from last week, and I don't know. Todd just started pounding on a bag of Cheetos and just kept going and going and going. And, you know, I don't know. It, it, like he had the munchies or something. And he just then he asked me why I even wanted production notes. What were production notes? And I, it was weird. So I don't know. No production notes this week. Better luck next week. Also, speaking of production notes, um, I'm kind of wondering why, um, you know, I'm here on my own. So my executive producer, remember, remember several months back, I promoted Lori Gowan to executive producer for the show. She is not here with me. So Todd's out of town. She's out of town. Oh, so if the show is a complete failure, it's not my fault. It's on the back end. It's the executive production fact. So, but it is nice to know um, that I've got my chat room here. I think they're doing a great job. They are uh, here supporting me. They, I would argue that the people in the chat room tonight like me more than they like Todd. So, oh well. Okay. So jumping in, we got an intro, we got productions. Let's talk about topics. First topic tonight was uh, just a fun little one, and that is our friend um, Cortana, right? So. If you've ever heard anyone talk about their Windows Phone, if you ever had a Windows Phone, you know one of the coolest features of Windows Phone is Cortana. She just 
it just works. It just it just rocks, right? You hit the little search button, no matter where you're at. You know, type in the thing you want to do or what you're looking for, and Cortana solves the problem. Um, also, we've had episodes before where Todd and I have talked about all the games you can play with Cortana. You know, all the traditional "Will you marry me?" all those fun things. Um, well. Turns out that some guys in Italy really liked Cortana, but they didn't care for the Windows Phone. Very sad for them. Uh, but so they have went and created Portana. And so Portana is um, Cortana for Android. So they actually went and took advantage of the APIs for Cortana and wrote an Android app that would uh, jump in there and you know pa uh, pass the two between. We have it up and running. Um, got a nice little... Uh, video here that talks you through uh, kind of what they're doing. The downside is that um, it's only in Italian. So while some of you are probably smart enough to speak Italian, myself, I never learned that particular language, so I cannot do it. So Portana is not very helpful. And also, I am still rocking a Windows phone. And hopefully, if Microsoft, if you're watching, see, I'm still using the 1020. I need the 1040 to come out. The, this thing. It's a little old at this point. Battery doesn't really last very long. It's hot. It, it's had a rough life, so I need you to release for a new phone there. Um, but you know, if you don't want to use Cortana or you don't speak Italian, uh, Microsoft has, has already publicly said they're going to bring Cortana to the other platforms. Just a matter of time. So, anyway, Cortana is coming. Um, speaking of Windows Phone, it turns out also uh, just random news note here. Windows Phone is a safer platform. I uh, was reading an article just this morning about uh, two roommates who ended up stabbing each other, and they were fighting over whether the, the guy's iPhone or the other guy's Android was better. True story, right? I mean, I got a link. It's on the internet. It's got to be a true story. But I just thought that was fascinating. So see, if you'd had a Windows Phone, you would have been clearly the superior winner, and you wouldn't have had it getting stabbed by your roommates. So the moral of the story is, Windows phones equal less stabbings. I can't make this up. This is tough. It just naturally comes to me. Um, rolling right along. Let's see. We got some Windows phone. Ah, another one I did. I was at lunch today with um, one of my good friends from the Microsoft world. And he uh, was talking about Skype for business. We are kind of, you know, doing the old making fun of Microsoft for having Skype for business. You know, it was Link, it was Windows Live Messenger, I don't know, who can keep up? Uh, but I, it, he was talking about, you know, it had messed up his computer because it just auto-downloaded. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Well, so it turns out that, you know, one of the Windows updates is supposed to, um, not Windows updates, one of the Office updates, so you go in, like, the Outlook, and you know an Outlook update, you go into, you know, the file or the, and then the options and the automatic updates, and you say, check for updates now. And when you do the uh, that update, it will actually pull in um, Skype for Business if you have Link running and upgrade that for you. So I thought that was kind of a weird sequence of events, but uh, at his you know advice, I went and clicked on the, all the buttons, forced Outlook to update. Sure enough, after closing every window known to man, right, because it wanted to close Word and PowerPoint and Excel, you know, all my manager -y tools, <laughs> Outlook, Internet Explorer, and Skype and Link. But once it closed all that, installed updates for five or six minutes, everything came back up hunky-dory. And so for one fleeting second, I was like, oh, look, there's Skype for business. I was excited, right? I saw the new UI. It's all fancy. It's all pretty. And then, sure enough, it says, oh, you have to do a restart before you continue. Like, not a restart of a computer, but restart uh, Skype for business. Okay. So I restarted Skype for business, and it went right back to looking like Link. Needless to say, I was a sad panda. Um, but with that, uh, it turns out that Microsoft has given administrators, uh, your link slash Skype for Business administrators, the ability through um, a domain policy to control whether you, when they upgrade you to Skype for Business, or if you manually upgrade yourself like I did because I'm impatient, uh, once you get do that, they control when you see the new UI. And so our uh, link slash Skype for Business slash weirdo administrators. Um, I think their names are Johnny Chimpo. Um, anyway, those guys went and set it so that we couldn't get the new experience. So when I restarted Skype for Business, it went back to looking just like Link. Are you confused yet? Because I am. 
long story short, if your administrators are controlling the policy, even if you get it, you can't really see it. Even though it's during the new code base, it reverts back to the old uh, the old UI. You know, kind of like old SharePoint did. Well, SharePoint still does, I guess, right? But this, I think this is more like the SharePoint 2010 upgrades. We had the lipstick on the pig, right? The visual UI upgrades. Same type of story. Um, so it looks like some people in the sound, uh, the link, the link, the chat room are having the same type of weirdness. So now you know. But Skype for Business, those people that I do know that have got to use it because their Johnny Chimpo administrators didn't take it away from them or didn't take the new UI, they're kind of fans. So I'm looking forward to playing with that more. I'm guessing Todd, because he's not on the actual domain, probably has already played with it. He's probably already told you all this. And what am I? I'm just repeating myself. But what do you do? All right. Um, so that was Skype for Business. The uh, the last one of my, or not last one, but the last weird uh, random news update is Mobile Geddon. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about Mobile Geddon, but that actually happened today as well. And so what that is, is Google um, finally implemented their new algorithm that takes whether or not your public website has um, a mobile experience. They went and reworked their uh, algorithm and to rate those higher. Uh, they're, they're reporting, and I don't know if this is Google reporting or someone making up numbers for Google, but they say that about 60% of the search traffic these days comes from a mobile phone, and so Google feels like they need to drive a better experience for mobile mobile search users. Sounds like a good idea in my book. Uh, so yeah, so if you do a search for mobile, now a page's results are weighted by whether or not there's an actual mobile experience for that site. So... Um, you know, Google announced this back in February. They gave administrators some time to kind of get caught up, get ready for this. Uh, but really what the reason they're calling it mobile getting is they feel like the people that's going to hurt the most are people that don't know that it's going to hurt. So like the small businesses in the world, right? The local cupcake shop um, website. They're like, hey, we get 10 clicks every day. And today, all of a sudden, we only got two clicks. And that's because their mobile experience has, you know, went to the pooper. Or because they didn't have a mobile experience, so Google said, Ch -ch -ch, "Back of the line, buddy. Back of the line." So, not a uh, not a good one. Now, if you're you know if you're a webmaster, if you're an SEO expert, hey, this is a great time to go knocking on doors and selling uh, selling some services. Um, I know a, a buddy of mine. He just started a business, um, Water Jug Fitness. Right? He's actually he's my brother-in-law. I guess he's not really my buddy. He's my buddy too. Um, but, you know, he was a little scrawny, 135-pound guy a couple years ago, and he does nothing but work out and drink water out of a water jug. And now he weighs 175 pounds of pure muscle and eats really healthy and does meal prep plans for people and all this crazy stuff. Anyway, um, I guess I should make sure he knows that his website is now uh, being neglected. So um, so anyway, Mobile Geddon, uh, if you're a webmaster, go make some money. If you got a, a small business website, Probably time to go make sure you have a mobile experience that Google approves of. And there's plenty of information out there. Google was ahead of this. They told people it was coming, but if you didn't know, you didn't know, right? It's the whole there's knowns, no, there's known knowns, and there's unknown knowns. But what we really want to know is the unknown, unknown, unknown unknowns. It's a great little clip from uh, Boondocks. If you ever go watch it, not work safe, but it's hilarious. They're kind of talking circles. They might be making fun of a former. Uh, um, you know, administration, yeah, I, it is what it is. So, all right. So that was mobile getting, um, number next, next thing I got for you, um, was reading or not reading. Um, in a lot of my updates this week, let's stop for a second and thank someone. A lot of my updates this week came from uh, one of my coworkers and a, just an all around good guy. Uh, Jerry Lecanu, right? He's a fan of the show, so hopefully he knows uh, um, he knows about uh, or gets to hear himself get plugged here. But Jerry kind of helped me with some of the different links today, and so one of them that he sent me over was this one on patents that I want to make sure that I s share with everyone. And um, what it is is hopefully you've all heard of the show. Oh goodness, no, I'm not going to remember the name of the show. Hang on, I'm going to click right here and remind myself what the name of the show was. Uh, it's the John Oliver show. What what is his name? Or what's the name of the show? Um, um, last it's like the last week in 
this week for last week. The the news, the fake news, or not the last week tonight. Thank you. Oh, sorry about that. So he does a show last week tonight, and you know sometimes he does you know pure comedy. Sometimes he does you know pretty relevant stuff. And so the show that he did last night was actually one that's very dear, near and dear to my heart, and that is um, patent patent reform. So he talks about patent trolls. And so you've probably all heard about patent trolls. And I don't really want to go down that road because I probably would ramble for a really long time. I am personally not a fan of patent trolls. Um, you know, it kind of makes me scared, honestly, to start another business because patent trolls will find a way to sue you for everything. I mean, I'm certain that doing a netcast while wearing a headset and drinking water has been patented by someone. And it's only a matter of time before I get a cease and desist letter or I can pay them $10,000. All right. Anyway, uh, so the American patent system, clearly broken. Uh, but in his piece, and it's about a 10 or 11 minute video, um, I'd recommend you watching it, though, if you've ever kind of wanted to understand a little better. You know, you like you get it. All right, patents are bad, but you never really understand how it all works or what they do uh, or the crazy shenanigans that they've gotten away with. Um, it's a great little piece because it is all factual on top of being kind of humorous. Um, so I'd recommend you watch the show. A little update on your patent law. You know, great example of the problem with patents. Um, you know, the bill passes the uh, the House, but the Senate doesn't even take a vote on it. And, you know, who's very proud of that? The trial lawyers of the world, right? They actually got the uh, our legislative branch to stop doing their job because, you know, lobbying is a real thing, and people with money stop, make, uh, make their own problems go away with using their money. So if you're into patents at all, I would recommend you check them out. All right, um, next little thing I wanted to show you here. Um, and I did a good job of not going off on a patent rant, so yay me. Um, so the last thing I want to do is if you're watching the show, either live or even the recording, close your eyes for like two seconds. I'm going to move my webcam, and it'll make you really dizzy if I don't. All right, ready? Close your eyes. Yep. All right, webcam is closed. Or you can open your eyes now. So what I wanted to show you guys was one of the favorite, my favorite purchases over the last couple of years, and that is um, this wonderful stuff called OptiWhite or OptiBright, and it is a, um, I guess it's just a plastic whiteboard type coating, but it's an adhesive roll, so you can use it to make wall whiteboards or desk whiteboards. So I've taken and covered my entire desk in it. So when I have meetings and stuff, right, I can just take notes right here. And say, you know, I love donuts. And so it's just a handy dandy whiteboard, but it's my desk also. Um, so, and the glare is obviously not very polite here. Um, but I'd really, you know, recommend it, right? So, you know, it's easy to take notes. I can color, I can draw when I'm bored. That says netcast. You cannot read that. Oh, my handwriting is really bad. I can read it though. Um, but it's been a great thing. If you're the type of person who doesn't really like to take notes, but sometimes you feel like you should pretend, like, for example, way over there on the right side that you can't see, there's a note written in red that says I need to send my boss a marketing slide tomorrow uh, because she told me in our meeting. And I was like, well, what do I do with this? I don't want to take real traditional notes. I want to write on my desk. Um, and, you know, because it's a whiteboard, right, it's real easy just to whoop, bye-bye, and it's gone. All right. Close your eyes for a second. I'm going to move the camera. All right, and you can open your eyes. I'm back again. Um, so there you go. So there's my whiteboard desk. It cost me roughly $100 um, to do this, I think. Or, of course, I expensed it, so it didn't cost me actually anything. Um, but so putting it on is, is – um, it's like – Kind of, I mean, if you've ever put on like a vinyl decal or anything, right? It's really just kind of a big um, sheet of vinyl. You can buy like a 50 inch roll or 60, and then you can buy as many feet as you want. So I think I got the 60 inch roll and I got like a 10 foot section of it. So I did it long way on my desk and then did, you know, five or six inches or five or six feet wide. And, um, you know, it probably took me 15 minutes to put on. You know, I sprinkle some water. Uh, I used a credit card to kind of push it flat. I mean, there's a couple of little air bubbles in it, but it's a pretty 
easy to work with stuff. It's not super duper sticky, so I was able to, you know, kind of up and down, up and down until I did it. Uh, so I've done my desk. I've done the desk in the conference room uh, and out there. You know, and I just was able to take a razor blade and just kind of, um, uh, kind of trim everything out. I... I'm a big fan. My uh, well, my former boss, he 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 bought a roll. He did his desk in it. Um, also, when you're on boring meetings, you know, I draw pictures of dogs and cats and things like that. Mm. So, so I don't know your particular company's policy on it, but it works really well. Uh, the other thing worth noting is they do have a easy to remove version, so it's a little more expensive. But I guess in theory. Um, um, in theory, you could, you know, if you had company that's going to get mad at you for, de you know, defacing company property, you could absolutely use the removable version and, you know, uh, just pull it up and take it with you. Also, if you look at their website, they have lots of videos on how to install it. And they're really missing the mark, at least last time I looked. They don't ever talk about doing desk, which is really, I think, the, the radical cool thing. They're always showing you how to do uh, walls and things like that. Um, and I can tell you that when we were SharePoint 911, uh, we actually painted two giant whiteboards in the walls of my basement. And that stuff is like nail polish. A, it, it was toxic for about a week down there. And B, I don't think it's ever coming off. Um, so I would never do that again. I would never use whiteboard paint. That stuff, epic fail. But uh, if I had to do it again, I would do this whiteboard stuff on the wall. Because worst case, right, like wallpaper, you could you know rip it off and rip it off and... Uh, you know, you could get rid of it. I when we go to sell the house, I hope that people want whiteboards in their basement. That's all I can say. So there you go. There's my contribution to all of your productivity. Um, I've only used the one brand, but I've done a couple of different orders with them, so uh, that's available. Who doesn't like whiteboards? You know, and and I got my my cool little markers. Right, Expo markers work great. Um, earlier today, I was practicing making colors. I was like, all right, so. How do you put these in order? Well, you know, there's light blue and dark blue and light green and oh, and red and blue make orange and or red and blue make orange. Red and blue make purple. Man, primary colors. It's tough. So, big fan. Sign your stuff up. All right. Oh, let's see. Oh, so tonight I have not been very wordy. I think I don't have a timer because I don't have an executive producer, Lori. Um, but I think I've only been like twenty something minutes. So. Uh, the last uh, topic I was going to throw out there for you guys is uh, just this last week, I finally finished a book I've been reading forever because sometimes I read books fast and sometimes I take forever to read a book. Um, but it's actually called Blink. And it is, um, who is it by? Mal Malcolm, uh, uh, what is his name? Malcolm Gladwell. And so this is a neat little uh, book that I actually really enjoyed. And it's it's mostly about or not mostly it, it it's pretty much about you know how learning to let your subconscious make mis make your decisions right it, it goes through all the science of how it knows before you do and things like that uh, but how generally speaking you know your first reaction is correct it also talks about how you can train your subconscious you know right I mean the more you know the more you know, like, for example, you guys watch a lot of netcasts, so you know right away when you see a good netcast or a bad netcast. Now, if we studied you, we'd find out that you're like, oh, when Todd's on there, it's a bad netcast, and when Shane's on there, it's a good netcast. But but you don't realize that. It's your subconscious. You just know, hey, tonight's a good sub netcast, and next week you're like, uh, I guess I'll watch. So, but it, your subconscious, it's doing all that work for you. So you can train it. Uh, and then finally, at the end, they talk about ways to kind of manipulate uh manipulate it but I, I thought it was kind of neat they do a lot everything's done through the lens of like a, a an example story like you know one's like a a piece of art from 500 bc that you know they spent uh i don't know 14 months it was 14 months studying to determine whether or not it was real and all the lawyers and technical scientists analysts all determined it was real so the museum bought it for millions and millions of dollars and as soon as um Art curators that actually worked in those that time period saw it like instantly. They're like, "This is fake," and none of them could ever. None of them would could actually or not. Very few of them actually would say it's fake, but they they would say things like, "It made my stomach a little queasy," or or I looked at it and I felt lightheaded, or the you know they had all these different explanations of their initial reactions to it, 
And it turned out that they were completely right, that it was a, a very well done forgery that had fooled all the scientists and stuff. But these people at a subconscious level, the, the art curators who had trained over years and years, had a, a great uh, just instant understanding. Uh, so there's stories about that. There's some stories about like police shootings and how those happen and, you know, and how sometimes we assign blame without really understanding that, you know, things were happening at such a rapid pace. They go into a guy with autism in great detail. So there's a lot of just really interesting stories that talk about how uh, you make very quick decisions. And they talk about something called thin slicing, how knowing less is sometimes better. Um, so I would recommend the book. I can tell you that I really enjoyed the first part. The middle, I kind of got to go bored, but the ending's really, really good. So make sure you power through if you get bored in the middle. Um, and it also, you know, I make a lot of, I, I, I like to make decisions based on my, uh, my immediate reactions. And, you know, I, I hate analytics and surveys and things like that. I like to just go with my gut. So it also is very self-affirming for me. So probably another reason I like the book. Um, I also found it interesting, you know, I'll spoil the very, one of the very last topics in there for you. But, you know, we always, um, um, you know, this goes back to the manipulation side, but we always think, you know, that a byproduct of being happy is smiling, right? You know, you're, yay, I'm happy, yay, I'm smiling. Well, they've got some studies that they're working through that actually, you know, have you ever heard someone tell you to smile until, you know, fake it until you make it, right? That kind of story. But it turns out um, that if you smile, that it actually causes you to become, it can cause you to become happy. It can have the reverse, the, you know, it can drive psychologically how you feel instead of, the tail wagging the dog the other way. So you can just walk around, smile like this for five minutes. Just force yourself to smile. I have a really creepy fate for smile right now. But when you do that, uh, you actually can force your, you're forcing yourself to be happy. You will become happier just from the sheer act of smiling. Um, so that was just another interesting little tidbit in the book. So I, uh, I don't know. I highly recommend uh, the book. So. All right, I think that's all the updates I have uh, got for you. Uh, Jack would like you guys all to know that Malcolm uh, reads his own books, or uh, reads his own books, duh, which is not actually a duh because I've never read any of the books I've written, but another story. Um, but uh, that he, uh, the audio books, Malcolm does them himself, and he's a, a, a great narrator, so I would recommend it. Um, so Jack, I have you know, your new headgear idea. I've got an idea there, but we won't talk about that right now. All right, so that's my updates and my topics for the week. Uh, kind of a shorter show, but that's not always a bad thing. Um, shameless promotions, not that you any of you care, but I will be doing the SharePoint Cincinnati uh, conference on uh, this Friday. It's a 424. I'll be talking about upgrade. Um, so hopefully I do a good job and kind of get down there and just meet some local Cincinnati folks and probably make sure I plug all my job openings that I'm trying to get filled. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying. Um, and, uh, then, you know, I asked Todd where he was going to be, uh, what he had coming up, you know, what his plans were for next week. And he's got a real jittery on me. I don't know. He was, he was rocking the super paranoid thing. So I don't know what that's all about. Uh, he also kept reminding me to end the show on the 420 mark. And once again, it was 1130. It's 1006 in my time zone now. So not sure what that is. Um, and then finally, I'd like to thank uh, the movie Super Troopers for being the best movie over, ever, right? It's helped me with some of my jokes this evening, and Johnny Chimpo comes from that. A couple weeks ago, I was in a meeting where somebody busted out Johnny Chimpo on the slides. Like, uh-uh, you don't make a Johnny Chimpo reference without uh, stopping this meeting and talking about Super Troopers and how awesome a movie it is. So we did that. That's what I do in meetings. All right, folks. Well, I appreciate you all for uh, jumping in tonight. Hopefully you uh, liked everything. And uh, if you have any questions, you know how to get me, right? I'm on Twitter at Shane's Cows, or you can email me, shane.young at rackspace.com. So thanks and have a great night.